Hi, I'm Dr. Messina. Today we're going to be discussing blister formation during laser tattoo removal. We're going to discuss when they develop, why they develop, and how to treat them should you develop a blister after your laser tattoo process. But first, if you like this type of information, both laser tattoo removal and general medical topics, remember to click subscribe and hit the bell to be alerted to our future videos. When we're discussing laser tattoo removal, we always have to have in mind certain side effects that can occur, and blister formation is one of them. When we develop a blister, it's important to know when it developed. A blister that develops immediately tends to be a blister from too much heat given to that tattoo ink. Blisters that form later on tend to be traumatic blisters from the trauma of the photoacoustic laser, and they could develop several hours after the treatment to a few days after. And they are much more a benign situation. Blister formation in a tattoo could look very ugly and very scary. That's why I tell my patients to call me if they do develop any blisters, because I think it's important to ease their mind. I've noticed that certain areas of the body tend to blister more. The ankle and the foot, for instance, and it's probably because it's very dependent and certain colors tend to blister more. For instance, red using the Q-switched KTP, I find is very likely to blister should you get too much cavitation. In other words, the whitening that we see when we laser it. So when I laser red inks, I prefer to see a shading as opposed to a thick white cavitation. Other things would be the laser utilized. I find that a Q-switched Ruby laser is much more likely to blister even at low fluences than a Q-switched YAG. So now let's look at some of these blisters and discuss what's going on. In this first picture, we see a finger blister and what looks like to be a black ink tattoo. In a situation like this, where you have a lot of ink in one area and there's not much healthy skin in between, you're more likely to absorb a lot of laser energy and make a blister like this. Now it should heal perfectly well. As we see in this photograph, the top part of the nun, where you see a lot of healthy skin in between fine lines of ink, there's very little blistering. Yet at her torso, where there's a preponderance of ink, we see a large blister. In this picture of the hands, we notice that most of the red ink is what we see blistering, which I said is quite common. Here we have another picture of the heart. Again, a lot of blistering. I'm particularly careful when lasering red inks because they blister so easily. And when you blister a red, you do run the risk of losing skin color in that area. This photograph I used in another one of my videos. I'm a little concerned with this picture because it looks like a mixture of traumatic blisters and blisters that are from too much laser fluence, just too much heat. The reason I say that is every inch of this tattoo is blister, which concerns me. When we look at a tattoo like this one, we really don't have that much blistering. But what we have is a lot of trauma around the tattoo. See, the laser beam is usually bigger than the tattoo itself when it's a small tattoo like this. And where the edges of healthy skin are, you do see redness and you do see what's called punctate hemorrhage around the edge of the tattoo. And this is a normal finding, by the way. A lot of patients will call me with something like this because the next day they've developed all these little red welts around the tattoo. And it's a normal process just because the laser at that time was hitting healthy tissue. Should you develop blisters. What can we do? Well, if you leave them alone, they're going to absorb on their own in a few days. Sometimes they'll burst and drain, and other times you could actually pop them, such as in this video. Now, if you do pop them, I recommend it to do as sterilely as possible. In other words, clean the blister with alcohol or betadine if you have it, and then use a sterile needle and puncture it, fluid is going to come out. Most of the time it's clear. Sometimes it's yellow, sometimes it's blood tinged, sometimes it has a little mixture of the ink color in there. Once the blister breaks, 
the skin over the blister is going to fall onto the skin kind of like the peeling of a grape. I tell patients to leave that alone. Don't pick that off. It's going to crust over and fall off on its own. Don't pick at it because in picking at it, you're going to pick at healthy skin at the edges and that's another way to make a scar. So I tell people to just leave the skin alone once it bursts and to keep it very clean and to use a topical antibiotic until it looks healed, either bacitracin or neosporum provided you're not allergic to either of those medications. And really that's about it. Most of the blisters, when they are from traumatic sources, heal very well. Blisters that form immediately from too much laser fluence run the risk of becoming scarred and developing pigment issues. I hope this answered some questions regarding blister formation and laser tattoo removal. Take care and have a good day.